is one of the rare times anyone is allowed inside the cave. This may be the only and last opportunity to film inside. The Pinches Idiotas uh, roundtable discussion of Werner Herzog's Cave of Forgotten Dreams, about the uh, feature length documentary about the Chauvet Cave. Uh, James Robbins, you chose this one. Uh, what made you want to buck the trend, uh, change to what, a feature length documentary instead of a film? Um, what made me want to do it? I, I've mainly been looking at quite a lot of Werner Herzog's. Uh, documentaries because I've not seen any of them and I know he is pretty much like the self-acclaimed like not self-acclaimed but king of the documentary um, films and I've not seen any of them and so there's a couple which had entered into my watch list at the time and so I just picked out one and that was the, the, the one which I've felt most in the mood for but I, I just think it gives everyone a, something a little different to do and actually probably an interesting first question is <laughs> Not necessarily versus a film, but what do you think makes a good feature-length documentary film? Mm. What I mean, attributes does it have to have? I think, I think content and, and, and topic is, is one thing, but it's more the style of filmmaking. Like that, that style of filmmaking was very much more akin to a, a, a cinema piece. Um, you know, just the, 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 the extended sequences of just... Just cinema with no tech, with no talking over it, and and um, quite loud, imposing music at times. Type thing that you know, that's far, far more um, cinematic than what you get on a standard hour long with you know four scheduled ad break type television show that, that might be your, your other traditional documentary. But that that I think is far more a made for cinema type experience. It was also, it did feel very run and gun at times. Like it didn't feel like the production value was, you know, highest on the priority list. The cameras, the camera being used was only a, like a GoPro. Mm. Uh, <laughs> well, they, they, they talked about that, didn't they? They said, yeah, yeah this, this, we can't take our full, our full camera equipment in. Mm. But then he, yeah, well, Werner, Werner Herzog, he's, like, he's done that before. They by, um, by the cave, like to what they could shoot with. Um, like they, it was hardly as if they could walk in with a load of like, big camera gear um especially with the size of that that tiny little um you know step well that they had to they had to uh, keep on when, whenever they moved through the cave so it just mm. seemed like the the actual production value was informed by the um you know the limitations of being in that cave which i quite liked i quite i, I felt there was a kind of um uh, you know a run and gun kind of feel to it and there was as you say jen there was interesting sequences cinematic sequences towards the end where you just had kind of beautiful music playing to like to the, the, the cave being lit up mm. with like interesting light displays that like, moving through the cave and that for me was was fun because you could just sit with whatever had just been discussed like in like the previous segment um and just kind of get immersed into you know the world of the cave the feel of the cave um so yeah, like, like like you say, I thought it was structured interesting um, with regards to the different techniques that were used. It was run and gun in some areas, cinematic in other areas. Um, yeah, lots of variety. I thought it was it was good. I thought it was fun. It, it also mm. went, went they went fully in on um, a lot of the interpretations. Now a lot of that was was bringing people in who were talking about their interpretation of it, which I thought was great. But then a lot of the voiceover parts, he was sort of putting his version of interpretation sometimes to ridiculous extent on the, the synonyms and, uh, you know, and, and what every single thing meant. Um, and I thought some of that was, was really good. Some of it was a little far stretched. Um, i trying to remember exactly what, what, what one I can remember, but it was, it was a week ago. I probably would have been able to tell you on Monday night. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree with everything you've all said, to be honest. Um, I've seen, um, uh, I told you last week about um, his, he did a sort of, it wasn't a documentary, it was a film, but he, it, it called Family Romance, which was set in, uh, I think it was Japan, or uh, Japan or South Korea, forgive me, I can't remember which one, but basically it's about uh, a, a real system in Japan where you can pay people to be your relatives, like for the day or whatever, 
Um, and he, it's all filmed on an iPhone as well. So the, the, this use of amateur, uh, this, this amateur camera work is something that he's clearly he's done a few times. Um, I don't know if any of you have seen uh, much more of his work anyway, but um, it, it, this was certainly one that played towards uh, you know the needs. It needed to be on those cameras because of you know, whatever was inside but the subject matter itself I thought was astonishing I thought it was uh, it's really really fascinating when you talk about yeah. a documentary needing to have good uh, you know good good content I mean they, geez this was uh, this was full of it so it was I'm, I, I'm, I really I'm not like even way. someone who's huge on about like you know g uh, caves and um, the history that's sitting inside them about you know from 30,000 years ago and stuff like that but I mean this like this really showed that how like the age of man, like it's this, this is showing stuff, it puts it into reality that how long ago humans was walking the earth. And so this was 20, 28,000 years ago or something like that. And yeah, it's, it's like a different too, planet, it's like a different world. But even there, even so, like this has been so well preserved. I thought the subject matter itself was uh, genuinely astonishing. Like, I've never heard cave, of it about it before was either. Was cave um, like one of the most prolifically drawn or painted caves in the world, like as, as far discovered. It, it, no, it was, it's just doubled the age of anything else because, the way it was, yeah. because of the way it was sealed, generally speaking, because, because there was, as they explained at the start, there was a landslide that sealed it off. And normally if a cave is exposed, it would continue to be exposed and therefore air would be going through it, water would be going through it and, and the, the paintings wouldn't be anywhere near as pristine. You might get like outlines of them and certainly at that, that old, they'd be gone completely. Yeah. Um, so because it was sealed and then someone it broke through as they uh, as they said and found them um, and they were you know they looked like they'd been drawn yesterday um, mm -hmm. I, I think just what you were saying guy like the, the way of making a documentary in that style was was really nice it, in uh, in addition to the fact that as they said the cave is really susceptible to environmental changes and so they're sealing it. you know they're, they're potentially the last film crew that could go in there and so that what they've done is they've said, right, we've got to pay homage to this. You know, there, there has to be amazing descriptions and um, film work of the, the, these artworks. Um, let's really do it justice. And I, I think they really did do it justice. Um, you know, whereas if you if you let a you know, Channel Five crew in, no disrespect to, mm. <laughs> to, to to them, but you know, if it was made for Sunday TV with four adverts, it wouldn't have quite yeah. been the same thing. Yeah, well, I think Werner Herzog's a good, a, a great director to do that as well. To be honest, because he's he, he mm. sort of he he make, he has he makes projects quite cheaply a lot of the time, but he's he, he cares a lot more about the quality of the content rather than you know what it actually looks like. So and he has a fan base that spe specifically uh, likes to invest in that kind of filmmaking. It's more about what you're watching as opposed to yeah. what it looks like that you're watching. Um, so you know he he's he's obviously he's clearly someone who's got a passion for what he's you know, he he won't go and create a, a, a documentary about something or a film about something if he's not really passionate about it and you can see that straight away. It's strange because even with the like with the, the different language, obviously English isn't his first language, but he's still such an amazing linguist. You know, the, the the narration, you, but you can imagine him talking like that. Not that, yeah, it didn't. It didn't seem scripted. You can just imagine him talking like that without ha having written all of it down. Uh, he's, got, he's got a brilliant grasp of the English language. Yeah. What did you about you? What about you, James? You, you, sorry, we, we've all been talking. What about you? you? Your choice? No, no. It's just I, I'm interested in kind of picking little bits out there because to my original question is like, what do you think actually makes a good? documentary film and Jem you've touched upon maybe some differences between documentary film that you'd have versus something a documentary that you'd have for you know hour half hour length that you see on tv and this is you know very much more it has the time to be able to fully explore the subject in more detail and also have those slightly more immersive elements where you're literally just showing people the subject matter without actually having the additional narration on top of it, which I think, you know, that's that's part of it, what I feel makes a documentary film good. So there's that, you know, educational you know, interest point of view, the immersion. And that, to some extent, then I think takes precedent over the production value which you probably find us critiquing more heavily in a normal in a normal um film so i i, I it was just interesting to see 
how I was so much more forgiving given that this was the format. It was going to be a documentary film for the production value to be lower. And I, I guess to, to your point, um, I can't remember if it was Guy or Jem, you, you're talking about the actual significance of the discovery itself and how they actually brought that to life. And I guess for me, there, there was times when they were showing you the kind of primitive technology that they would be using to be able to make the uh, paintings themselves, the, their method of hunting, etc. But I think that the things which actually really had, uh, I guess, uh, an emotional impact on myself was just to be able to appreciate how, I guess, the fundamentals of art haven't really evolved that much versus the technology of, of way in which they lived was and that was quite fascinating to see that actually it's maybe something that's so synonymous like art and the appreciation of art with human beings that actually maybe that is something in itself that defines us and just is hasn't had a hasn't doesn't need to necessarily change that much for it to still be felt and experienced in the same way that probably those people did in, in, as well which i thought was probably my most interesting point out of the thing it's nice it's very nice really nicely put I, I, the one thing that stood out for me the most out of all of it was the sound editing that was pretty whack like they uh it I, it went down on it. <laughs> yeah, like it was. Um, it was a lot. <laughs> it played a huge part on all of it, even down to the what eventually was what you said, Liam. In terms of, it's got to be five or six minutes of um, just you know slow tracking, panning shots of the of the drawings on the wall and things like that. After all the talking's done, that's what you are left with for quite a long time. Um, and yeah, but there's just a lot of. You know, not even necessarily sound editing and that fits the period or anything like that. Like a lot of it, you almost imagine sitting in like a documentary about the Tudors, like well, the, the choral singing and stuff like that. It's just, but um, that was the main thing that stood out to me amongst all of it. Um, which I don't know whether that was necessarily a good thing or not, but um, it, it pieced together well, I guess, in that way. The sound editing. How did you find the dubbing, everyone? I'm just interested to. No, you found that. Dubbing of what? Did you did you watch it with mine had a dub over each of the people that was were speaking, or did you watch it with subtitles? I had subtitles. It, it, it did with some and it didn't with others. Some some people it, it seemed to change. Yeah, mix? I think I just mix? had subtitles. Oh, yeah, it, it was it was a mix it was a mix. I had I had some nasty dub on uh, quite a, quite a few which the, I there, was, there was a yeah there was a there was a chap in the studio just doing a voiceover for some of them. Yeah. There's nothing more distracting than a nasty dub though to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't like it. Yeah. Well, I, th I thought the most one of the most interesting things which they, they really didn't touch upon much. I mean one of the one of the scientists talked about it for a couple of minutes and then just moved over it was he think like okay, you've got these amazing artworks done over quite a, quite a long period of time. And then there was a landslide and, and it was all sealed off. But what they, what they touched upon was actually the first drawings were done 32,000 years ago. And the last drawings in there were done 27,000 years ago. They're like there's been 5,000 years <laughs> yeah. difference between one person yeah. blowing around their hand and another person blowing around their hand. That's quite yeah. amazing. And imagine... Yeah, imagine being um, in that in that age and and finding artwork. Yeah, because artwork now is, is is commonplace type of thing. But yeah, back back then, it, imagine it was quite rare. Yeah, um, and just it, it was obviously this this very very special place for a long long period of time for possibly a lot of people. It's quite mad when you put it like that, isn't it? Because yeah, five thousand years back from now, that we, we, that would be enough to make us think that was another like a world away. But yeah, the, 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 the fact is, that it's that long ago for us, but that was the same for them doing all of that. Yeah. All up. The crazy thing is, ninety nine point nine 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 recurring places like that around the world have have been lost over time. Yeah, yeah. There would have been far far more um, incredible artworks that, that it would have been everywhere. Yeah, have just yeah, you know, just didn't have the um, the the fortunate nature of a landslide to seal the front door. 